1970. 1970 was a year when the skies turned cruel. Disaster followed flight after flight, exposing dangerous flaws in fuel systems, navigation, and even aircraft design. It became a year the aviation industry could never forget. The first tragedy struck in the Caribbean. A DC-9, barely a month old, took off from Santo Domingo on a short trip to Puerto Rico. Everything seemed routine until both engines suddenly failed. Contaminated fuel had quietly doomed the aircraft, and it plunged into the sea, killing all 102 people on board. It was the first warning that this year would be different. Not long after, Europe faced its own heartbreak. A comet jet carrying holidaymakers from Manchester to Barcelona went off course after a simple navigational mistake. Air traffic control added to the confusion by mistaking another radar signal for the comet. Moments later, the plane slammed into the Montseny Mountains, taking 112 lives. A tiny error, but with devastating results. Then came Canada, where DC-8 turned disaster into tragedy. After a hard landing in Toronto, the pilots tried to go around. But the impact had already ruptured the fuel tanks. Fire ripped through the wing. Explosions followed, and parts of the aircraft tore away before it crashed. All 109 people on board were killed. Investigators found that mistakes during the landing and go-around were to blame, leading to major revisions in pilot procedures and training across the aviation industry. By the time the year ended, these three crashes alone had claimed 323 lives. And they weren't the only ones. 1970 saw more deadly accidents around the world, each one adding to the heavy toll. But the nightmare didn't stop there. As the new year began, aviation faced fresh tragedies that proved things could get even worse. 1971. The first tragedy struck over Japan. All Nippon Airways Flight 58, a brand new Boeing 727, had just taken off from Sapporo, heading to Tokyo with passengers returning from a holiday trip. The flight seemed routine until a Japan Air Self-Defense Force fighter jet, piloted by a trainee, collided with the airliner's tail. In seconds, the 727 lost control, broke apart in midair, and came crashing down near Shizu Kuishi. All 162 people on board were killed. The fighter pilot managed to eject and survive, but the outrage was massive. Investigators found the trainee was flying without radar support, leaving the airliner unseen until it was too late. The follow-up shook Japan. Top defense officials resigned, and the instructor in charge was convicted of negligence. But the year wasn't done yet. Across the Pacific, Alaska Airlines Flight 1866 was flying a multi-stop route from Anchorage to Seattle. As it neared Juneau, bad weather and thick clouds made the descent tricky. The crew relied on navigational signals, but they were misleading. Believing they were safely lined up, the pilots descended too early. The aircraft struck the Chilkat mountainside, killing all 111 people on board. The investigation later showed the instruments themselves were working, but the crew hadn't cross-checked everything. A mix of false readings, poor coordination, and misprocedures turned a routine approach into a disaster. By the end of 1971, these two crashes alone had claimed 273 lives. Different causes, Different skies, but both showed how vulnerable aviation still was. And while 1972 brought its own share of accidents, it was 1973 that truly shook the world. 1973. 1973 was one of those years when flying suddenly felt less safe. Flights that started off as routine turned into disasters. And by the end of the year, more than 2,800 people had died in air accidents worldwide. The first big tragedy struck with Varig Flight 820. It was a Boeing 707 traveling from Rio to Paris. Everything seemed normal until smoke began filling the cabin. Passengers panicked. Oxygen masks didn't help. And the crew had no choice but to crash land in a field near Orly Airport. The plane slid to a stop. But by then, 123 people had already lost their lives, with only 11 surviving. Investigators later found the cause a cigarette tossed into a lavatory bin. Something small led to huge changes, from banning smoking on flights to redesigning cabin safety features. Not long after that, disaster hit Aeroflot Flight 964 in Moscow. The Tupolev Tu-104 was coming into land when its main instruments suddenly failed. With no clear horizon and poor visibility, the pilots got disoriented. The jet spiraled out of control and crashed, killing 122 people. Then came Aeroflot Flight 3932, Another two 104. Just minutes after takeoff, the plane veered off course, most likely because of an electrical malfunction that disrupted navigation systems. It crashed into terrain and all 108 people on board were killed. These three crashes alone claimed over 350 lives, and they were only a part of the grim total that year. But looking back, 1973 was a turning point. It showed just how many ways things could go wrong in the air, but it also pushed airlines and regulators to tighten safety, shaping the safer skies we know today. Still, even as lessons were learned, 
tragedy never stayed away for long. Just a few years later, 1976 would remind the world that the skies could turn deadly in an instant. 1976. 1976 was already a rough year for aviation, but September made it unforgettable for all the wrong reasons. In the span of just nine days, two major crashes claimed more than 300 lives, each for very different reasons. On September 10th over Zagreb, a British Airways Trident heading to Istanbul crossed paths with an NX Adria DC-9 climbing out of split. The skies were busy, and air traffic controllers were struggling to keep up. A clearance mistake put both planes at the same altitude, and by the time anyone realized, it was too late. At 33,000 feet, the two jets collided. The Trident broke apart instantly, and the DC-9 crashed into the hills near Verbrovec. All 176 people aboard both planes were lost. Then, just nine days later, tragedy struck again. Turkish Airlines Flight 452, a Boeing 727, left Istanbul for Antalya at night. With faulty instruments and broken distance equipment, the crew mistook the city lights of Esparta, 60 miles away, for Antalya's runway. Believing what they saw, they descended too early. The first officer even asked, Should I believe you or my eyes? But before the captain could react, the jet crashed into a hillside. All 154 people on board died. Two disasters, two different causes. One from air traffic miscommunication, the other from human error and equipment failure. Together, they made September and the year 1976 one of the darkest years in aviation history. 1978. 1978 turned into a graveyard in the sky. Hundreds of people never made it home. Lost to planes that disappeared into oceans, crashed into hillsides, or burst into flames before help could arrive. Among the worst were two disasters that stood apart, Air India Flight 855 and La Flea Flight 001. Together, they claimed nearly 400 lives and marked 1978 as one of aviation's darkest years. The year had barely begun when the first tragedy struck. On New Year's Day, Air India's giant Boeing 747, Emperor Ahsoka, lifted off from Mumbai bound for Dubai with 213 people on board. Minutes into the flight, the captain's main horizon instrument froze, locked in place, and falsely showed the jet banking right. The flight engineer pointed to a backup gauge, warning, don't go by that one. But in the pitch black skies over the Arabian Sea, disorientation took hold. The captain corrected in the wrong direction, rolling the massive jet into a deadly bank. Within seconds, it drove nose first into the Arabian Sea, killing everyone on board. Investigators later confirmed the cause, a failed instrument combined with a fatal lapse in cross-checking. Ten months later, another tragedy struck. On November 15th, La Flela Flight 001, a DC-8 packed with pilgrims returning from the Hajj, approached Colombo, Sri Lanka. Cleared for landing, the jet drifted off course. Controllers tried to warn them they were under shooting, but the crew never heard. It was the wrong frequency. Seconds later, the aircraft sliced through coconut trees and smashed into a plantation. The wreckage was scattered across the ground. Of the hundreds on board, 183 were killed and 79 survived. And as the world turned the calendar to 1979, no one could have guessed that two of the decade's most infamous crashes were just around the corner. 1979 At first, 1979 looked like just another normal year for aviation. Flights were routine, skies seemed safe, and passengers trusted the system. But by the year's end, two crashes would prove how quickly everything can fall apart. On November 28th, Air New Zealand Flight 901, a sightseeing trip over Antarctica, lifted off from Auckland. The plan was simple. Sweep across McMurdo Sound, let passengers snap photos of the icy wilderness, and head back home. Families were excited. Cameras ready. What the crew didn't know was that the flight path had been quietly altered hours before takeoff, placing the jet directly in line with Mount Erebus. From the cockpit, the pilots believed they were cruising over flat sea ice, but a deadly sector whiteout erased depth perception, hiding the looming volcano. By the time warning alarms screamed and the engines roared for a climb, there were suddenly only seconds left. The DC-10 struck the slope. All 257 lives were lost. And then, only six months earlier, tragedy had struck in Chicago. On May 25th, American Airlines Flight 191, another DC-10 accelerated down the runway at O'Hare, bound for Los Angeles. Just as it lifted off, the left engine tore free, ripping away vital systems. With its wings crippled, the aircraft rolled violently and crashed into a trailer park. In an instant, 273 people were gone, everyone on board plus two on the ground. Investigations shook the industry. In Antarctica, the Royal Commission revealed that the fatal change in coordinates never passed onto the pilots, sealed the flight's fate. In Chicago, the NTSB found that shortcuts in maintenance had fatally weakened the DC-10, 
Together, the disasters forced major reforms in aviation rules and regulations, while leaving only heartbreak for the families who lost everything. 1980. 1980 was meant to be a year of progress in aviation, but instead, 19 routine flights ended in tragedy. Two disasters in particular left scars that would never fade. The first was Saudi Flight 163. A Lockheed L-1011 TriStar had just taken off from Riyadh with over 300 people on board, many of them pilgrims. Minutes later, alarms warned of smoke in the cargo hold. The crew turned back and landed safely, but the danger was far from over. Instead of ordering an evacuation, the jet taxied off the runway with engines still running and doors still closed. As the smoke thickened inside, time ran out. By the time rescuers forced a door open, everyone on board was gone. Investigators later blamed faulty insulation, toxic fumes, and a lack of emergency training for turning a manageable fire into one of aviation's deadliest cabin disasters. The second was Aeroflot Flight 4225. On a sweltering July night, a Tupolev Tu-154 climbed out of Alma-Ata, heavy with passengers and fuel. At 500 feet, it was struck by a sudden downdraft. The jet stalled, rolled, and crashed into a ravine, exploding on impact. All 166 lives were lost. Investigators concluded the aircraft's weight and the powerful microburst winds left no chance of survival. It remains Kazakhstan's deadliest air disaster. In the end, 1980 didn't mark progress. It showed how easily the skies could turn fatal, whether from fire below or unseen forces above. 1982 1982 started out looking like another year of safe skies, but that sense of safety didn't last long. First came Pan Am Flight 759, a Boeing 727 nicknamed Clipper Defiance. It was making a routine trip from Miami to San Diego with a stop in New Orleans. As the jet lifted off into the stormy skies, everything seemed fine until it hit a violent microburst, an invisible wall of wind shear. The plane lost lift almost instantly, dropping back toward the ground. Just seconds later, it tore into a neighborhood in Kenner, Louisiana. Homes erupted in flames, debris scattered for blocks, and yet in the middle of the wreckage, a 16-month-old girl was found alive in her crib. On the plane, all 145 passengers were killed, along with eight people on the ground. Investigators traced the disaster to microburst winds, nearly impossible to detect back then. The crash finally pushed airports to install Doppler radar, a change that would go on to save countless lives. Not long after, another tragedy struck across the Iron Curtain. Aeroflot Flight 8641, a brand new Yakolev Yak-42, took off from Leningrad heading for Kiev. It was carrying pilgrims, engineers, and families on what should have been an ordinary flight. But at cruising altitude, a critical piece of the tail's control system failed. A jack screw holding the horizontal stabilizer snapped from metal fatigue, sending the jet into an uncontrollable dive. In seconds, it broke apart midair over Belarus, killing all 132 people aboard. Investigators discovered the flaw came from poor design and maintenance practices. The Yak-42 fleet was grounded, redesigned, and forced to prove itself safe before it could ever fly again. By the mid-80s, radar training and stricter maintenance rules had started to reshape aviation safety. For a while, skies grew calmer, disasters less frequent. But progress in aviation often hides new dangers. Ones no one sees until it's too late. And when the 1990s arrived, those dangers came roaring back. 1994. In 1994, two passenger jets were lost just weeks apart. One broke apart in the sky, the other crashed straight into the ground. Neither gave passengers a second chance, making it one of the deadliest years in aviation. On April 26, 1994, China Airlines Flight 140, an Airbus A300-600R, was flying from Taipei to Nagoya, Japan, carrying 271 people. The skies were clear, the landing checklist was complete, and everything seemed normal until the approach. By mistake, the first officer hit the go-around switch, a command meant for aborted landings. The autopilot reacted by pitching the nose up and adding thrust. The pilots tried to fight it, but the stabilizer, still locked under automation, resisted. The jet climbed too steeply, then stalled. Alarm screamed. Five seconds later, it was over. The plane struck the ground and exploded. Out of 271 people, only seven survived. Investigators later found that the pilots didn't fully understand how the A300 systems would behave in this situation. Airbus had already issued a software fix that might have prevented the crash, but this plane didn't have it. The disaster forced airlines and regulators to rethink pilot training and the role of automation in modern cockpits. Just weeks later, on June 6, China Northwest Airlines Flight 2303, a Tupolev Tu-154M, took off from Qian bound for Guangzhou. 
At first, the climb seemed normal. Then, at cruise altitude, the jet started shaking violently, rolling and pitching out of control. Seconds later, the plane broke apart in midair. All 160 on board were killed instantly. The cause was traced back to a shocking mistake. During maintenance, mechanics had reconnected the autopilot cables incorrectly, reversing two key controls. It went unnoticed until it was too late. Investigators called it one of the worst preventable errors in Chinese aviation history, and the 2154 fleet was quickly grounded. In the end, more than 400 people died in just these two crashes. Both were triggered not by storms or sabotage, but by hidden flaws, one click, one wire, and one year of painful lessons.